A unification theory is a theory in physics that unifies all of physics under a single theory. Also called the theory of everything, unification theories ultimately describe the underlying nature of reality. One difficulty with these theories is that they are often unfalsifiable. The problem is that most of the key concepts behind unification theories are sufficiently broad that they can explain almost anything. As a result, it is hard to find a way to prove them wrong. One solution is to develop more specific theories based on the set of key concepts that are narrow enough to make specific predictions that can, if wrong, falsify the specific theory. Unified field theory is a theory that seeks to unify the four forces of nature under a single field theory. While it has been shown that electromagnetism and the weak nuclear force do unify at high energies, the strong nuclear force and gravity have not been shown to unify with the other two. Electromagnetism was the first unification of forces in physics. Electric charge and magnetism were originally considered different forces. However, in the mid-19th century, it was discovered that they are manifestations of the same force. Now called electromagnetism, the unification resulted from the work of Michael Faraday, James Maxwell, and others. It was discovered that magnetic fields are a result of electric charges in motion. While Einstein is best known for his special and general theories of relativity, he dreamed of unifying gravity and electromagnetism. He spent the last 20 years of his life trying to develop a unified field theory and was engaged in this effort when he died. The electroweak interaction is a unification between electromagnetism and the weak nuclear force. This unification occurs at energy levels greater than 100 gigavolts, at which point the exchange particles, W and Z for the weak force, and photon for electromagnetism become essentially identical. At these energies, the W, Z, and photons become four massless bosons labeled W minus, W zero, W plus, and B zero. This occurs in part because over 100 gigavolts, the W and Z bosons stop interacting with the Higgs field. The electroweak action has actually been observed. Grand unification theory is the theoretical unification of the strong nuclear force with the electroweak interaction. According to theory, it would require energy levels as high as 10 to the 14th gigavolts. Such energies are beyond current technology to produce, as a result it remains untested. Even stranger, the exchange particle, called the X boson, is estimated to have a mass of a whopping 10 to the 15 electron volts. Quantum gravity is the theoretical unification of the strong nuclear force, electroweak interaction, and gravity. According to theory, this unification should occur at 10 to the 19 gigavolts, which is beyond the capacity of any Earth-based accelerator. These energies are so high, it is highly unlikely that it will ever be tested. Loop theory, also called loop quantum gravity, is the main competitor to string theory. However, it is not as well known. Loop theory attempts to quantize gravity by describing space-time as a fabric of woven loops where each loop is a Planck length, that is, 10 to the minus 35 meters. One problem is that it's not yet certain that loop theory can reproduce general relativity. String theory is a theory in physics where point particles are substituted by one-dimensional strings. How these strings vibrate form different particles. Since it includes gravity, it qualifies as a theory of everything. These strings are about a Planck length, or 1.916 times 10 to the negative 35 meters in size. It requires multiple unseen dimensions that are curled up to near Planck length. Despite its popularity, it has one major flaw. It is inherently untestable, which is problematic for a scientific theory. The original version of string theory is called bosonic string theory because it contains only bosons, that is, force-carrying particles. It lacks fermions, which are the particles of matter. It also had a particle called a tachyon, which has imaginary mass requiring it to go faster than the speed of light. It also has a whopping 26 dimensions. The solution resulted in five different string theories. Called super string theories, all five versions have 10 dimensions. They have both bosons and fermions with supersymmetry between them. All five super string theories lack tachyons. Five superstring theories differ in details such as open and closed strings. The existence of five superstring theories began a search for a single theory to unify them. M-theory is the theory that incorporates and generalizes the five superstring theories. 
M theory can be applied to many situations, ironically including supernatural situations, which is something mainstream physics has tried to avoid. The one downside to M theory is that, at present, it is untestable. The one test of CERN's super collider producing micro black holes did not produce positive results. M theory has 11 dimensions and allows the extra seven dimensions to be as large or larger than the four dimensions of space time that are already known. In these 11 dimensions are multidimensional objects called membranes that are generally referred to simply as brains. Resulting from M theory equations, they are membrane like structures consisting of from 1 to 11 dimensions. The idea is that these brains exist in an 11 dimension space and that they contain universes. According to this model, our universe is a three brain. This 11 dimensional space is called the bulk in brain cosmology. Each brain is its own universe with its own laws. These parallel universes could be closer than your computer screen, but in directions we cannot perceive. Being outside the space-time of our universe, they would have a time all their own. Even the bulk would have its own time, or no time at all. In M-theory, most of the strings of string theory in our universe are open and attached to our three brain at their ends. Since the atoms of our bodies are attached to our three brain, we cannot move off it into the extra seven dimensions. Because we perceive the universe entirely by way of interactions with electromagnetism, that is light, in interactions with matter, we cannot see or otherwise perceive the extra seven dimensions. General Grand Unification, or GGU for short, is a scientific cosmogony developed by Dr. Robert Herman. A cosmogony is a theory of the origin of the cosmos and of reality itself. Dr. Robert Herman, Ph.D., is a retired professor of mathematics from the U.S. Naval Academy. He developed the GGU model by way of an advanced level mathematics called non-standard analysis. The GGU model generates theories of everything showing the causes and unifying processes that produce the behavior of objects. In fact, the GGU model can produce many cosmogonies which are theories of everything. In the GGU model, the processes that produce the behavior of objects occur behind the scenes in what is called the non-standard physical world. Through the nature of how scientific theory describes physical laws, Dr. Herman mathematically showed how physical laws actually parallel human thought processes. General intelligent design is an interpretation of the GGU model and is not related to the intelligent design movement. The intelligent design movement is restricted to finding evidence of intelligent design in living organisms. General intelligent design, on the other hand, indicates that all natural processes are intelligently designed and operated. Based on mathematical analysis, general intelligent design uses non-standard analysis to model intelligence. This is not a case of, I cannot understand it, so God must be behind it, but it is a conclusion of the mathematical analysis. It results naturally from the fact that natural phenomena are described in terms of abstract human thought, such as mathematics. According to general intelligent design, all natural processes result from intelligent agents that control the processes. These intelligent agents could be one or more intelligent beings or mechanisms pre-programmed by an intelligent being. Put simply, according to general intelligent design, the reason why natural phenomena fit abstract human thought such as mathematics so well is that it is ultimately a result of abstract intelligent thought. Digital physics is a collection of theories that proposes that at its most fundamental level, the universe is information and that it is therefore computed. This is a concept that is growing in modern physics and is becoming more and more mainstream. One thing that shows the power of this idea is the fact that it was conceived of by multiple people independent of each other. However, this leads to the conclusion that the universe is a simulation being run inside some kind of information processing system. Such an information system could not have originated by chance processes, but had to have been specifically programmed. It must have been programmed by intelligence. Now, the logical conclusion is that this programming intelligence is the being we refer to as God. This conclusion is so unsettling to some proponents of digital physics that they have resorted to the notion that the universe is a simulation inside some futuristic computer operated by humans of the future or even aliens. However, the computing power needed to simulate the universe in as high of detail as it is would have to be bigger than the universe itself. Even some form of Darwinian development process has been proposed in an effort to try to make digital physics fit naturalism. 
However, if the universe is a computed information system, it would still need to be programmed to evolve even if the end result was not pre-programmed. So such an idea, even if true, does not eliminate the need for an intelligent programmer. Digital physics results mainly from quantum mechanics and the fact that it is the best way to explain even the strangest of quantum weirdness. It is further supported by the fact that all natural laws obey abstract mathematical principles. This is an up-and-coming idea, but it faces the specter of the philosophy of materialistic naturalism, a philosophy which digital physics totally refutes. The information universe is a digital physics interpretation of general intelligent design. It is a specific theory I'm developing based on both concepts. The goal is to, by starting from digital physics and general intelligent design, to develop a detailed enough theory to be testable and even falsifiable. The starting point is that the universe is, at its most fundamental level, composed entirely of information. This infers that the universe is a virtual reality resulting from an information processing system whose programmer and operator is God. It further infers that the universe exists to give us conscious entities a reality to experience and live in. The first development was that space is a grid with a Planck scale resolution. This provides a quantum level nature to gravity, thus uniting gravity in quantum mechanics. It also eliminates singularities, since even in a black hole, an object cannot have a size smaller than Planck length. The developing process has produced three testable predictions. In a quantum eraser experiment, even destroying the data needed to determine which slit a particle goes through after being collected but not looked at will produce a wave-like interference pattern. Instantaneous quantum effects are instantaneous in the lab frame of reference and not the, the relativistic frame of reference of the particles. The existence of three new particles, which only interact with the nuclear forces and gravity. While the information universe is still a work in progress, the goal is still a detailed, testable theory. With three predictions, it is already a testable theory. Unifying all of physics under a single theory is a major goal of theoretical physics. The results of such efforts are often theories of everything, dealing with the nature of reality itself. However, as is often the case, one's starting philosophical assumptions affects one's conclusions. In the case of theories that touch on the nature of reality, philosophical assumptions tend to stand out more than usual because they are closer to the basis of those assumptions. However, the priori dismissal of the existence of God and, in fact, all possibilities of intelligent design, even when the science screams it, reduces science from a pursuit of the truth to atheistic mythology development. Thus, if a theory that unifies physics is to truly be a theory of everything, then the existence of God can not be dismissed out of hand. This is because if he does exist and you deliberately exclude any possibility of his existence, then any resulting theory would be fundamentally flawed. 